rate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. From Hollywood, International Silver Company, creators of 1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate, presents The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring young America's favorite couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. It's breakfast time as we look in at the Nelson household at 1847 Rogers Road. Harriet and little five-year-old Ricky are already at the breakfast table. Ozzie and eight-year-old David are... Uh, pardon me? Eight and a half. Oh, oh, of course. <laughs> I'm sorry, David. Ozzie and eight-and-a-half-year-old David are expected momentarily. David! Here I am, Mom. Breakfast is ready. Isn't it a wonderful day today, David? Sure is, Mom. Move over, Ricky. You can go out and play just as soon as you finish. Well, and you can have a nickel for an ice cream cone. Oatmeal again, huh, Mom? <laughs> and what's wrong with oatmeal? It's nutritious, tasty, healthful, and bodybuilding. Wonderful for a growing boy. Well, then Ricky can have mine. He's got further to grow. <laughs> Ricky's practically finished with his breakfast. Enough of that nonsense. Now I got the oatmeal. I'm so healthy now, I can't sleep nice. <laughs> oh, say, I almost forgot. I bought something yesterday I want to surprise your father with. What is it, Mom? A vase. A what? An antique vase. I bought it at an auction sale. <laughs> here, here it is. Jiminy, no, not that. David, what's the matter? What is that? A vase. Just a vase, that's all. Oh, I thought it was full of oatmeal. <laughs> Gee, I bet that thing could hold a million pounds of oatmeal. Oh, David, don't exaggerate. The vase is only four feet tall. Oh, here comes your father. I'll put it right in the middle of the table. Surprise him. Oh, ah, good morning, good morning. Wonderful morning. I've got an appetite like a horse. You've come to the right place. We got oats. <laughs> What has my beautiful little wife got for breakfast this glorious morning? Let's see. Uh, oatmeal. See? Ozzy? A beautiful, nutritious, tasty, bodybuilding oatmeal. You really like oatmeal, Pop? Oh, do I. Yum, yum, yum. There you are, Mom. You won't have to throw it away after all. <laughs> oh, David, stop acting silly. Here's your orange juice, Ozzy. Oh, thank you, dear. Ah, oh, gee, that orange juice is good. Well, why shouldn't the orange juice be good? Here we are in California where the oranges grow. Yeah, that's right. Isn't California a wonderful state? Where else can you put your hand out the window into your own backyard and pull it back with two or three ripe gophers? <laughs> uh, uh, what's wrong, David? You usually laugh at those funny things I say. Well, Dad, you already gave me my allowance this week. <laughs> Come on, you two. Breakfast is getting cold. Hey, Mom, Pop hasn't even noticed the new base. Never mind, David. Uh, what was that? Nothing. Only I'm afraid you aren't very observant this morning. What do you mean? Well, haven't you noticed anything different? Noticed anything? Ozzie Nelson, sometimes I can't help thinking you're just like a man. <laughs> Well, as long as there's some resemblance. <laughs> you mean to say you don't notice anything different? Different? Oh, of course, your hair, and I love it that way, too. You should wear it that way more often. Uh, would you pass me... I the... haven't done my hair yet this morning. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, of course, that dress. Oh, it's lovely, dear. Beautiful. When did you get it? April, 1941. <laughs> Before I go, I'll give you a hint, Pop. It's on the T-A-B-L-E. On the table? Yes. Do you like it? Something on, on this table? Yes. It's beautiful, isn't it? Gee, I'm sorry, dear. I can't see a thing. <laughs> Unless it's behind this... What is this? <laughs> well, it happens to be an antique vase, and it's just what I've been talking about. Oh. Oh, my. Uh, Harriet, where where did you get this, this uh, vase? Yes. You found it in a tomb of an Egyptian pharaoh. No, 
You want it in a box of Cracker Jack. Oh? Am I getting warm? A little. I give up. I bought it. That I never would have guessed. <laughs> and, honey, it only cost me $10. Isn't it beautiful, Ozzy? Now, Harriet, let's be sensible about this, shall we? You don't like it, do you? Well, frankly, dear... A, a... Ozzy Nelson, it happens to be a beautiful vase. Beautiful? Harriet, let's face it. The guy who designed that made a mockery out of crockery. <laughs> Well, it so happens that that vase belongs to the early American period, around George Washington's time. It could have a very romantic history. George always brought fresh flowers to Martha. He might have used his vase for that. Well, he might have used the vase for that, but uh, I heard he chewed a lot of tobacco, too. <laughs> That's very funny. But you may as well get used to it, because I've decided to redecorate this entire room using the vase as a central figure. Why, Harry, let's be sensible. Why do over an entire room for that old vase? It'll improve things. For example, I'd like to get rid of that easy chair over there by the fireplace. But, Harriet, that's my favorite chair. Oh, Ozzy, it's so shabby. Well, I know, but gosh, it's taken me years to get that chair just the way I want it. Why, that chair has the same shape now that I have. You're not kidding. You and the chair dragging in the same place. Well, I happen to like things just the way they are. Oh, Ozzy. You're all finished breakfast, aren't you? Yes, I am. Oh, Gloria. Gloria. Did you call me, Mrs. Nelson? Yes, I did, Gloria. We're all finished breakfast in case you want to clear away the dishes. Gloria, what's your opinion on this? Don't you think it's a little silly going into an extensive redecorating project at this time? Well, personally, I think very definitely that it... Would you mind repeating the question, please? <laughs> well, let me put it my way, Gloria. Don't you think that things should be changed every so often? Oh, yes. Yeah. And dipped in luck, too. <laughs> Now, Gloria, Mrs. Nelson was referring to furniture and room decorations. There seems to be a difference of opinion as to this antique vase I bought downtown. Have you seen it, Gloria? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you, Gloria. I just got it yesterday. You know, you can pick up some really nice things downtown these days. Well, I try, but I guess my whistle doesn't carry. <laughs> Gloria thinks it's a pretty vase. Oh, yes. I think it's a beautiful sight. Well, I give up. To me, it looks like a huge bottle of beer. Well, to me, that's a beautiful sight. <laughs> uh, I better get at these dishes. I'll see you later. Honestly, though, dear, don't you think it'd be better to wait till it gets a little cooler before we do over the room? Oh, certainly. We don't have to do it right away. In fact, I'd like to shop around a little first and get some more ideas. Well, in the meantime, why don't I take this out to the storeroom in the garage and give you a chance to forget, a, to, to uh, think about it a little more. Well, okay, but be sure and go out the front way with us. The grass is wet and back. You might slip and break the vase. That's funny. I was thinking the same thing myself. <laughs> Furniture, antique vases, women. Hello, Mr. Nelson. Oh, hello there, Emmy Lou. What have you got there? Well, this is an antique vase that Mrs. Nelson bought. I'm taking it out to the garage to store it. You mind if I look at it? No, go ahead. Although you look so young to suffer. <laughs> Just what kind of a vase is it, Mr. Nelson? I don't know, Emmy Lou. I think it's a Grecian urn. What's a Grecian urn? Hmm? What's a Grecian urn? It depends on where he works. <laughs> What's the Grecian urn? <laughs> yes, I get it. It's pretty hot today, isn't it, Mr. Nelson? <laughs> Can you carry that vase down the steps without dropping it? I'm afraid so. It's a fine time for David's roller skates not to be here. Oh, I saw David swap his roller skates to Bobby for a hammer. I could use a hammer now, too. What are you going to do with the vase? 
I don't know. Let's just set it in the middle of the lawn and throw rocks at it, shall we? Why are you so bitter about it, Mr. Nelson? Well, it's this way. It isn't enough that Harriet fought this idiotic face. Now she's going to do over the entire room to fit it. Oh. Well, why don't you drop it? You know, sort of accidental-like. And then tell Mrs. Nelson that you couldn't help it. Uh, tell her you tripped and fell down. That it was an accident. Would you believe a story like that? Of course. Gosh, how women change when they get married. <laughs> no, I mean, Lou, I'm afraid my wife knows me to, uh, to wouldn't go for that. Well, then I've got another idea, Mr. Nelson. What's that? I'd insist that she return the vase. And if she got mad, I'd let her go home to her mother. And I'd refuse to let her take the children. And she'd sue you for custody of the children. And if it looked like she was going to win, you know what I'd do? What? I'd let her keep the vase. There's no use being stubborn. <laughs> I think you're foolish to break up your marriage for a vase you couldn't get more than a few dollars for. Well, that's right. A, a few dollars for it. Well, say, I could sell it. it. Oh, but what if Harry... No, she wouldn't. And if she did, I'd tell her that somebody... Emmy, thanks very much for the suggestion. Give me that vase, will you? That's a wonderful idea. You mean you're going to sell the vase? Absolutely. Emmy Lou, there comes a time in every man's life when he has to be daring and take a terrible risk. Um, I hate to bring this up, Mr. Nelson, but have you got something in mind in case Mrs. Nelson finds out about this? Oh, of course I've got something in mind. What is it? A one-way ticket on the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. <laughs> Well, say, while you're on that one-way trip, Ozzy, you might spend a little time thinking about 1847 Rogers Brothers' silver plate. Who knows? Someday it might be the means of getting you back home to wife and family again. Seriously, though, this lovely silver plate is worth thinking about, folks, and worth planning for, too. It has beauty, richness, quality. A name that's almost 100 years old. A reputation as America's finest silver plate. Its patterns show details unknown to silver plate before. The high raised ornamentation, the pierced knife handles, the heavier balance. These are the features which show that men of imagination as well as skill are creators of this lovely silver plate. They are the features that keep 1847 Rogers Brothers America's finest silver plate. <laughs> Are the lovely King Sisters riding out on Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. Do you hear that whistle down the line? A figure that is singing number 49. He's the only one that'll sound that way on the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. Yeah, 
To the Nelson. For a change, Ozzy has put himself out on a limb. Instead of taking the antique case, which is Harriet's pride and joy, out to the garage, he's decided to save himself a little physical labor in the future by following that old slogan, out of sight, out of mind. And we find him now going into Mr. McQueen's antique shop to sell the vase. Uh, gosh, loaded with junk. Doesn't seem to be anybody around here either. Just be patient, sir. Just be patient. <laughs> Busy. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't see you. What are you doing? I'm crocheting a tea cozy. <laughs> you interrupted me just as I was going around the spout, darn it. There. Now, what can I do for you? Well, I've come to see you about an antique. Oh, you've come to the right place, sir. We remember the National Antique Dealers. Of course, you're familiar with the slogan of the National Antique Dealers. The older the better, except in a sweater. <laughs> you've got there. I have here a very fine old antique vase dating back to... About 1922. 1922? Well, it's really older than that, but I don't want to seem too eager. <laughs> You'll have to admit it's beautiful, though. Well, I wouldn't say it was beautiful, but it has a certain horrid fascination that women go for. <laughs> you want to sell it to me? Uh, yes, I do. Would you be interested in buying it? Uh, what do you want for it? What did you give me for it? I asked you first. <laughs> Okay, make me an offer. Fifty cents. <laughs> What's your price? Fifty dollars. Shall we compromise? All right, I'll double my offer. <laughs> One dollar. Okay, I'll cut my price in half. Twenty-five dollars. <laughs> I should have started by offering you a dime for it. Hey, just look it over and see how lovely it is. Hmm. Very shabby condition. Yes, did you ever see anything so gorgeously broken down? <laughs> just look at those beautiful chips and cracks in it. Tell you the truth, this is one of the most antique antiques I've ever seen. Oh, dear, I do wish Mr. Cameron were here. Who's he? He's the fellow who owned the store 19 years ago. He was an expert on vases. Well, can't you get in touch with him? Oh, no, he died 12 years ago. Well, if... if... Never had a sick day in his life. Very tragic. Left a wife and three children. Well, I want... Any insurance? <laughs> Not a cent. What happened to his family? Well, his widow later married a well-to-do businessman who owned his own buttonhole factory in Scranton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> then they're getting along all right now. Well, the youngest son had measles when he was six, and their house was attacked by termites in 1934. But everything was just dandy the last I heard. Well, the next time you write, will you remember me to him? I certainly will. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure to meet you, Mr. McQueen. The pleasure's been all mine, Mr. Nelson. Oh, goodbye, Mr. McQueen. Goodbye, Mr. Nelson. Oh, say, by the way, what about the vase? I'll give you $5 for it. Sold. Oh, Mr. Been home. Oh, about an hour. You look proud of yourself this afternoon, Pop. Well, David, I just did something pretty smart, even for your old man. Yes, sir, one thing every man should learn is the psychology of women. What's that, Dad? Well, suppose you're married to some woman, and one day she comes up to you and says, David, I want to buy a fur coat. Now, what would you say? Well, I'd say, okay, if I can get a baseball bat. <laughs> no, no, no. no, David, that's where the psychology comes in. You try to make the woman forget what it is she wanted. You know what I mean? Oh, like the time Mother wanted that string of pearls. Exactly. And every time she mentioned them, you kept talking about everything else. That's right. They look pretty on her, don't they? <laughs> David, I don't win all the time. No, but she does. <laughs> By the way, where is Mom? I don't know. I've been waiting for her myself. She must still be out shopping, I guess. Well, I'll see you later, Pop. In here, Harriet. Ozzy, I have the most wonderful surprise for you. Guess what I bought? What? A vase. I know you showed it to me this morning. Don't you remember? Oh, no, this is another vase. I have it out in the car. 
Another vase? Yes, another vase. Harriet, darling, please, not another vase. Yes, Ozzy, another vase. <laughs> That's a funny joke, pretending you bought another vase. <laughs> See, I'm laughing. <laughs> now tell me, not another vase. Well, yes, darling, another vase. But we've already got a vase. Well, that's what makes it so perfect. This vase is a mate to the one I bought this morning. A mate? Harriet, these things aren't going to turn out to be like rabbits, are they? <laughs> oh, silly. Ozzy, I'm anxious to compare the two vases. Would you go out in the garage and get the other one? Well, uh, but Harriet, why should I go to all the trouble of going to the garage and bringing that one back? I, I could take this one out to the garage and then just snap a picture or something. No. <laughs> Ozzie, stop joking. Get the base from the garage. Why are you so suspicious? <laughs> My goodness, if you don't want to get it, I'll... No, 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 don't, don't, I'll, I'll get it. You just wait right here. I'm sorry, Mr. Nelson, but really, I sold that vase ten minutes after you left the store. Oh, but I've got to have that vase back. My wife insists upon it. But we have so many other beautiful things here in the store. Oh, would you be interested in a genuine antique music box that plays, Goodbye, this is Jennifer, the goodbye. No, no, please, I haven't finished yet. <laughs> Little Jennifer, 37.50. No, 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 I tell you, I've got to have that vase. I've got to, I tell you. I, I've just... Have you ever been married? Is this a proposal? <laughs> Listen, I wasn't going to tell you this, but I, I guess I'll have to. My wife is a lady wrestler. Really? Exactly. And she said if I don't buy the vase back, she'll break every bone in my body. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? She sounds positively vicious. Now, let's see. The woman who bought the vase didn't leave her name, but I've got her address. Yes, here it is. Now, you wait right here. I'll go over and see if I can buy it back from her. Oh, thanks, old man. You'll never know what this means to me. My bones knit so slowly. But, Mr. McQueen, I want the vase myself. And besides, my husband would be very angry if I sold it. Well, madam, I wouldn't ask this, but if you only knew how desperately this man needs the vase, how frightened he is. You mean of his wife? His wife. Oh, is she really a lady wrestler? Wrestling the wind-up at the Legion Stadium Monday night. <laughs> oh, and would she really... You should see the scars he has on him already. Oh, my. And he's such a nice fellow, too. Tell me, why does such a nice fellow marry such a terrible woman? Well, if you ask me, madam, he is a nice fellow, but he doesn't look very bright. <laughs> oh, the poor man. Okay, I'll sell you the vase for $20. And so the vase will cost you $25, Mrs. Nelson. But I finally convinced her to sell it back. Oh, fine. She sounds like such a nice girl. Oh, she is. She sold it to me even though she was afraid of what her husband would do when he found out. Why does such a nice girl marry a brute like that? Well, between you and me, Mr. Nelson, she's a nice girl, but she hasn't got very good taste. Hmm? Otherwise, she never would have bought a terrible vase like this. <laughs> I didn't think of that. <laughs> a woman who likes a vase like that, imagine the kind of husband she'd pick out. <laughs> well, say, that reminds me, i got to get back to Harriet with this vase. Well, so long, i got to dance. You on that stoplight? Oh, Harriet. Oh, hello, dear. Where in the world have you been? Well, I, I tell you, I, I went to the garage of the long way, and then, what a job. It was hidden behind the... Well, anyway, I finally got it. Got what? With the vase. Look. Oh. Oh, you shouldn't have bothered. But you said... Well, shouldn't have bothered? Well, while you were gone, I decided not to redecorate the room after all. You see, I... Uh, 
I don't know quite how to tell you this, dear, but I accidentally broke the vase. You broke it? Yes, I, uh, uh, I tripped over one of David's roller skates and dropped it. But David swapped his roller skates. What'd you skate? say, dear? I just wanted to remind you that it's only six months and ten days until George Washington's birthday. Oh. Ozzie, I've got something to tell you. Yes? I didn't tell you the truth about that vase. Uh Uh-huh. I didn't break it. I sold it back to the same place I bought it. McQueen's Antique Shop. McQueen's? (laughs) I knew I couldn't sleep tonight with that on my mind. Harriet, I forgive you. And I'm very glad you told me the truth. Because the successful marriage is based on mutual confidence and trust. <laughs> when the ship of matrimony sails forth on the sea of life, we must avoid the hidden shoals of deceit. Ozzie, <laughs> that's beautiful. Thank you. Now I want to confess something to you also. What, dear? Well, this afternoon, for a moment I was tempted... Uh, just tempted, mind you, to sell that vase and not tell you. Oh. Well, don't you give it another thought, because I forgive you. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. That's all right, dear. Ozzy. Yes, Harriet, anything bothering you? Well, just one thing, darling. What is it, honey? Why did you tell a man I was a lady wrestler? Well, uh... <laughs> Ozzie and Harriet Hilliard will be back in just a moment. Meantime, if sometime in the not-too-distant future you hear a sound like this... Don't get excited. It's just some of those eight million brides we have meeting at the same place with the same idea in mind, namely... I'd like to see a service of 1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate. Me too. I've waited a long, long time for this day. What a day it will be. What a wonderful day when you can really go to your silverware dealers and get the fine silver plate you've been dreaming about and planning for ever since the war began. Because 1847 is America's finest silver plate. It's lovely and warm, in many instances even unique. No other silver plate pattern, for example, can match the fine open-work knife handles and delicate contours of eternally yours. In fact, these distinctive features of design and construction have been seldom achieved even in the finest solid silver. That's the kind of silver plate you want to see in your home after the war. So, wait for it. If you're one of those war brides, make your first post-war purchase eternally yours. Created by 1847 Rogers Brothers. You know, I guess I was pretty silly for making such a fuss about this vase in the first place. It's really not bad looking. Well, let me have it, will you, Harriet? Well, here it is, but be careful, dear. It's big, but it's rather delicate. Say, uh, couldn't we use this as a wall decoration? Oh, no, dear, I don't think so. Well, we could use it to keep flowers in, couldn't we? Mm, I think it's a little big for that. Say, I have an idea. We could use it as an umbrella stand. That is in case we ever move to Florida. (laughs) Well, well, perhaps. Or I tell you... Makes a nice bunch of little ashtrays, too, doesn't it? Silver Company, creators of 1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate, invite you to listen to the adventures of Ozzy and Harriet next Sunday over your CBS station. And don't forget, America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. This program originates in the Hollywood studios of the Columbia Broadcasting System and is also broadcast over the Trans Canada Network of Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This adventure of Ozzie and Harriet will be transmitted to our men and women overseas by shortwave and through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Appearing in support of Ozzie and Harriet were the four King sisters, B. Benaderet, Louise Erickson, John Brown, and Joel Davis. Original music was by Billy May. Vern Smith speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.